Enniskillen, the county town of Fermanagh, home to Mary Monaghan and her husband, Ian. They've been married for over 25 years and have two children, Paul and Melissa. On the 22nd of March 2014, Paul became one of 268 people across Northern Ireland that year to die by suicide. Hearing that, that your child has taken their life, I don't know if you can put it into words. I just thought, no, this isn't real. You know, it, it, it's absolutely horrendous. Shortly before 6.30 that Saturday morning, a local man walking his dog found Paul's body. I would say I left for work that morning at probably around the same time that he was found. The things that torture me are that, as a mother, why did your gut instinct not sort of tell you that your child, something's happened, but there was absolutely nothing? After dealing with the emergency services, he broke the devastating news to Paul's girlfriend. Was in work for till about 10 to 8, and one of my work colleagues came up and said that there were people outside who, who wanted to speak to me. But now I said to them, I think, um, what's wrong, you know, what's happened, what's he done, where is he? News, it was something to do with Paul. And his girlfriend just said to me that, that Paul was dead, that he had took his life um, during the night. I just thought they've made a mistake. Something not right about this uh, can't be, there's no way this, this could have happened. I rang my dad, which was very hard because he's elderly and he's not well. And he was just totally, I, don't, I can't even describe how he was. He was struggling to breathe and struggled, struggling to speak. Um, that was quite traumatic. I was in shock, totally in shock and just numb. Find it very difficult to function at all. Um, and then the police turned up and uh, it sort of got serious then. I had the chore of going to tell Melissa, which I think is probably the hardest thing I'll ever, ever do, because I had to wake her up and just say to her that, you know, Paul was dead. When we went down, to where Paul was found. Um, initially, they weren't going to bring us, but we sort of insisted. And uh, a policeman that we know, we grew up with, he was there. And uh, that's when I seen him, that's when I broke down because I knew it was through. And uh, he hugged me and told me he was sorry. The two of us cried our eyes out. We could see that there was a tent closed off and... When we got down there, it just was horrendous. Totally horrendous. He was just lying there like he was asleep. And, you know, we just wanted him to get up, start laughing, say it was a joke. But he didn't move, he was just lying there. And it was so cold, so dark. Uh, even though it was daytime, it was just, just couldn't believe the sight that was there. Seeing the, the bags and how he'd done it, it's, it was just. When Paul was, was coming home, um, uh, the undertaker was very, very good. When he phoned, well, I was threatening it. I was threatening that phone call. Because again, I, we're going to have to see Paul and he wasn't going to be alive. He was going to be in a box. It's just, it's, it was hard to comprehend how we're just all going to be able to cope with it. His grandfather was here and uh, he started to cry and I says, don't, because this is hard enough. The funeral, um, we kept him at the house and instead of bringing him to the church, we just kept him here 
till the morning of the funeral. We just wanted to hold on to him as long as we could. So that morning, um, McGain was, we were going to have to say goodbye and it was horrendous. Burying your child is just, it's one of the most horrendous things I think any parent will ever do. I personally feel like the day I buried Paul, I buried half of myself or a good quarter of it because life just doesn't feel the same anymore. It's like um, a part of me's gone, a big part is gone. Um, I would feel very much like Ian and Melissa have very similar personalities, very similar traits and you know, they like the same things. Paul would have been like me, bubbly and outgoing and I just feel like I lost part of myself. It's hard to grieve. Um, really hard, I find it hard to grieve. I just try and support Mary and Melissa as much as I can and pray that time will somehow heal us, but you know, it's, it's something you think about every day from you get up until you go to bed. I think it's just changed me as a person completely. I don't think I'll ever be whole again. I don't think I'll ever be the same bright, bubbly person if we're out at a party. I don't feel like I should be enjoying myself. I feel guilty for doing it. I just, it just feels horrible. It just comes and kicks you when you're not expecting it, you know? I don't know where I fit in anymore. You know, it's, yes, you're still a wife and a mother, but I don't think I really do that very good anymore. I think I just hurl myself into a bubble and just sort of try and preserve myself. The hardest thing is getting up in the morning and uh, getting out, getting on my life. Sometimes you think of the things that he could be doing if he was still here, the stuff that he would be doing as a normal person, live, trying to live life. And uh, that really gets you. It's really hard to deal with that. It can be something simple. Maybe a song on the radio. A song that he liked. Just something simple can throw you completely. That's, that's the hardest thing. I would just say to people, just, just don't do it because you really will leave a trail of destruction behind that is never going to be fixed. It's never going to be right again. Life for us will never be the same again. It's a, like a permanent solution to a temporary problem. I really don't believe at 22 years of age that there was anything that would have troubled Paul so badly that he couldn't have fixed. It'd be easy to tell Paul because this is exactly, tell him exactly how I feel now and what I've just said because the pain that he's left behind, I know for a fact if he knew the pain that his family and his friends and his girlfriend and everyone that else is left behind, he wouldn't have done what he did. It would be as simple as that, he would not have done it. No way. Just, he would realise, and I, I'm pretty sure he's, wherever he is, he knows that now. If you or someone you know needs help, talk to someone, please.